everyone, and thank you for coming for today's video for Sardic Keep It, where I'll be reviewing all types of weapons and perks and seeing how effectively good they are. Today, we'll be looking into the new Dungeon Pulse Rifle called the Premonition, which is a 340 high impact frame and a very unique pulse at best. Now, funny enough, I had this weapon in Roll since the Daily Dungeon was released, but never paid any heed to it. It was only after testing the weapon out and looking further into its stats and perks that I saw how great the weapon was and generally what it could offer, so be sure that this will be a very positive review. I will of course cover how it plays in both PvE and PvP, with the selected gold roll perks to look out for, and also provide as much nitty bit bits of information for you guys to be aware of. Now to get this weapon, you will need to complete the Pit of Heresy dungeon and encounters, and hopefully the weapon will drop from there. If you wish to increase your chances of it dropping further, using the Hymn of Desecration consumable from the Ever's Mourn Bounty could help, although I've heard that simply completing Altos of Sorrows also has a chance of the weapon dropping. The weapon role I will be playing with has Court Screw Rifling, Light Mag, Outlaw, Kill Clip and a Reload Masterwork, which is a perfect role in my eyes but needs to swap out both Barrel and Mag choices to fully turn it into a God role. The Premonition now is the first energy high impact pulse rifle in game to date. Now think about that, from year 1 all the way to now we have never had a high impact energy pulse at all, which is very strange as this pool is popular for the PvP side of things, but the fact that it hasn't been bunched off into energy until now makes you wonder why. With that being the case, this actually allows you to maximise your connect slot for something else, such as a sniper rifle, a SMG, a sidearm, a shotgun or even a high impact handgun if you wish. This is great as this weapon will have more usage outside of season 8 compared to any other weapon because of that second slot bonus. At the same time, its perks are condensed as the first two perk slots have the run of the mill perks you would commonly see in most weapons, but its perk column 3 and 4 only have 4 active perks available. This places it in the same category as the Garden of Salvation Rage weapons with condensed perks, and to make it even more interesting is that the perks for these columns are actually good, with perk combos such as Outlaw and Kill Clip or Rangefinder and Headseeker being easily attainable for the mass. This means two things now, one, less RNG is involved for the M perk so it's slightly easier to attain what you're after, and two, you know exactly what the chances are to get the following perks, which will be always a 1 out of 4 chance. Now, this should give you even more better reason as to why you should get this weapon. For a stats side, it has some good stats and bad stats. It just needs a few bumps here and there to overall make it better. Now, its stability is a 48, which isn't bad, but the threshold we want is ideally 50 to 55 to improve accuracy. But that isn't so much of an issue. We then have handling, which is around 33, and it's a very important stat if you plan to use this in PvP. If you plan to use this in PvE, then you only need to focus on improving its stability and its range and that's typically it. Overall, its stats are great and played superbly, although one thing to note is that its recoil direction drifts to the right, but not so much and something we can work with. So one thing I do recommend is you add in a targeting adjuster or a backup mag as it further backs up the weapon and makes it a bit more usable on your end. Do not add in a counterbalance mod as it will change the drift to, from the right to the left and it will then further off trail from being fired upon, so avoid it at all costs. Now for the God War side of things, you want to look out for the following. PvE, you want to either have 4 bore, polygonal or fluid barrel, high calibre, AP rounds, ricochet rounds, outlaw and rangefinder, kill clip, firefly or demolitionist. With demolitionist being great for a Nezarek Sin void build for PvE play. For PvP God Rolls, it's quite the same with the first and second column being untouched. However, column 3 you can add in under pressure and firmly planted, as they both provide a boost in stability and column 4, add in Headseeker to replace Firefly. Now, Firefly might be something you wish to keep, which isn't a problem, but these are just my general thoughts on what was most best to go ahead and use for PvP. So now with that out of the way with, here's some live PvP commentary of me using the weapon in action, so you can get a general idea as to how well it plays in PvP. And then, once it's done, I'll give you the final verdict from there. So I'll see you guys in All a second. Right, now, hopefully this map here plays within my favour so I can actually get kills. Because all the other maps I've been playing on lately has just been terrible, especially Gambit Ruins. God, that map. Enemy try to flank on the left side here. And hope I don't get sniped. That means there's someone right there. Yeah. Zone B captured. You have I've got a sniper done. just on that corner there, so I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to back off. You gained the lead.
I'm gonna back off because I know where exactly they are. I'm gonna peek. Nope. No one there. Okay. So you see that my team's now pushed up. Oh, I'll take that kill, thank you. Now let's check over here. Okay, I'll go back off a sec. Wait here. Oh shit, shit, shit. Okay, that was close, that was close. Let's go with Scout right there. Oh god, I need targeting just there, I just realised. Nope. I just realised, like, half my shots I was, I was shooting, like, half of them were missing. Ooh. I need targeting just badly, I've now just realised. Yeah, I've literally now realised I need targeting Juster. I didn't know it was this bad until now. That and it might also be because of the scoop as well, but it's definitely I definitely have that feeling there. Back off, the key's got recluse. Team is not doing a good job here. Okay, teammate got him. Good, good, nice, nice. You captured zone B. You have advanced. Is that because of me? Well, we got him in the end. But that's definitely my death. Holy shit. A sniper over there, yep. Got my team. Oh god, I can't. It's too risky, I need my team to push up. Don't be lost. I can't, I can't push up. I literally can't push up. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. I don't know why I didn't, I just didn't push up. I've now officially got my lesson not to go do that. Now, if I if I had my teammates to push up with me, and they went ahead and took the heat you off me. Zone B. You have advantage. Your enemy <laughs> of course. <laughs> but yeah, like if my teammate. See how bullshit this is? Oh my god. I hate this spawning.
Okay. Now, if I did not reload, I probably would have had a better chance. Son of a bitch. Don't be lost. Excuse my language, but... Let's see, is there any sniper over here? No. I'm gonna go get that warlock back, because... There's someone right over here, so I don't want to chase anything. Which means right there. Ah, I see. That was a terrible move. I don't know why I even challenged. Zone C captured. Actually, you we're taking C back. Up. Okay, great. What I should have done in that situation there was actually Three wait. Minutes. I should have done that situation was wait. Now they're probably gonna charge me here. So I have to see. You captured zone no one. B. That's a power play. Okay, so they've basically given them. us the points. Now hold them. Zone C lost. I don't like this one bit. Okay, I need to back off. Of course. Jotom, of course. Maybe nice skill you got there, mate. Now you see, I want to push up, but at the same time, it's like I can't push up. Zone B lost. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do something a bit more. Let me just check something. Yeah, I'm gonna do something a bit more smart actually. I'm do this because they cannot push me if they tried. Zone C. You have zone advantage. So you go. So yeah, because I locked that area down, they could try. But they wouldn't get me. You captured zone B. That's a power play. It's a shame that I couldn't do it where there's like Less people. Okay, they're trying to see back now, I'm guessing. One minute. You're dominating the field. Don't let up. Give me one more, mate. I'm trying to put that right here. It's gonna be a sniper on the corner here, on the. Okay, that was pretty damn terrible. We did it all right, but still terrible. Christ. Those spawns. Alright, let's try a different match. Now, as you can see, the weapon could do work when it lands its headshots, and only requires two swift bursts to finish most players. Adding kill clip, and this will boost our TDK further, and also allow us to engage via body shots, and still do impressively good. The only thing I found annoying was my stability hampering my accuracy against most players, and being outranked by most handgun users, which in my case was my fault, as I wasn't generally paying attention to my surroundings. But at the same time, I feel like this weapon needs even more range, or rangefinder to help boost it along the lines. And with the range that it currently has, it's wholeheartedly best to try and aim for one with rangefinder. It definitely will make a difference. But honestly, except for a few perks I would change on my version, the Premonition is just a monster to use, and I recommend you get and keep this weapon no matter what for the pros and cons it offers, and the fact that it will serve you well from here until the ge very general end. Don't sleep on it, definitely get it and grind through it while you still can. So that comes to the end of the weapon review for today. If you enjoyed the video then please by all means leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny content, if you dig that type of stuff.
Link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.